sometimes the native features of Notion are not enough to craft your own very customized workflow. And that's why Notion recently launched native database automations. They are a new feature that you can implement in any database and they are very light, right now simple automations composed of a trigger and an action. So in this video, we are going to unpack everything we need to know about Notion database automations as of right now, that is a few days after the launch with the state of things. We're gonna also tackle two possible use cases for creating default tasks in a project management system, as well as tracking the time spent per status in a project management system, again, where you have a pipeline of statuses that you might wanna track over time to see data analytics about them. So let's start this exploration of Notion database automations by understanding where you can find them, more details about how you can use them and if you can use them, depending on your plan, as well as all the user interface. The first thing to know about Notion database automations is that they are available on any Notion database at the very top right corner, where there is this icon here, the lightning icon, where you can click on it and create as many automations as you want. That is, if you are on the plus business or enterprise plan. For free plan users, you are not able to create automations in your Notion databases. But if you duplicate a public template that has automations active within that template, you will still be able to use those automations, but you can't edit them. You can only see them and turn them off or delete them, but you can't create new ones or edit existing automations. With that out of the way, if you are within the group of users who can use automations, that's where you can find them. And this video is focusing on how to use them. There are many limitations currently with Notion database automations, and I wrote them down in the blog post that you can find in the link in the description. So this video is specifically focused at exploring possibilities and the use cases of Notion database automations. In addition to the lightning icon that is quickly accessible at the top right corner of any database in Notion, there are also the three dots where you can find automations right here. That's just another way to reach the same exact spot that is creating your automations and seeing existing automations in your system. Currently, you can't see global automations across your entire workspace. Instead, you can only see all the automations in each database when you enter that database and then click on the automations menu. Now let's create an automation and see what's the basic structure of it before addressing two use cases. To create a new automation, you can click on new automation right here and you can name it. Be aware that anyone who is a workspace owner or member with full access to a database can edit or delete existing automations. So if you are in a team and you decide to use automations in databases, it might be a good idea to set a naming convention and some sort of guidelines or principles around how you and your team are gonna use Notion database automations because it is very easy to maybe destroy someone else's work if there is no principle or guideline around these things. So here is the name of the automation. For example, let's say create default tasks. And Notion database automations are composed of two key elements triggers and actions. Triggers can be multiple ones and they only follow an OR statement right now, meaning whenever one of those triggers is hit or meets the conditions of the trigger, the automation is gonna start. So there is no end statement right now included in triggers in automations. And there is not even a middle filtering option that you have. So you only have OR triggers or you can use just one trigger and you can have multiple actions and actions happen all at the same time or shortly one after the other whenever a trigger of a Notion database automation is met. So let's create the first automation to see this in action. And for this example, Notion database automation, we're gonna create two default tasks whenever a new project is created in this database. So we have a projects database and we also have a tasks database. There is a relation between those two databases very importantly for making this use case work. So I'm gonna add a trigger and you can see here the options for triggers. 
It can be whenever a page is added to the database that we're looking at, or it can be whenever any property is edited in a page, or it could be whenever a specific property is edited in the database. You may also notice that Notion database automations can be database specific or view specific. And that's what this means, four pages in, and you can select projects, meaning any page in this database, as the description says, or you can also select specific views right here that you can see right here at the top left corner reflected on the picker. This can be useful if you wanna only generate Notion database automations for specific pages in a database. For example, let's say you have a projects database where you have a tag for tagging projects as work or personal. And let's assume you only wanna have a Notion database automation that generates tasks for work projects. In that case, because we do not have specific filters in Notion database automations yet, you could set up a view that says work and that has a filter applied to it, only showing projects where the tag is work. And you can create a Notion database automation, pulling data only from that view and then doing whatever action you want. So that's an indirect way to actually apply filters. So let's set the trigger. In our case, that's gonna be page added. So whenever a project is added, that is it. If we want, look at this, we can add additional triggers. That would be an or statement, meaning when any of these occur, as it says here. But in this case, we just wanna have whenever a page is added. And then there is the action or the actions that we need and in our case, the action is to create pages in the tasks database for two default tasks that we have in this example. So we set up an action right here, and you can see the options that we have. We can add pages to databases. We can edit pages in other databases. We can send Slack notifications, and that is something that was already here for a few months, and that is a native integration between Notion and Slack. Or we can edit properties or a specific property within the database, in this case, projects. For our use case, we wanna create default tasks and we will add page to the tasks database that we have right here. And that's the UI that we have. We can add page to task as task. That is the template that you wanna apply to the new page created. And whenever you have multiple templates, you can choose directly here from the drop down menu. You have the task name, let's assume that is task one default. And notice how ideally when we create default tasks, we can also reference maybe dash and then the project name from the sugar so that tasks are clearly defined in the master task database and recognizable by everyone. But in Notion database automations, it is not possible to reference properties from triggers yet. You can only reference the page in the relation property when you add a new page. So for now, we wanna, we have to be okay with this. So it's gonna be task one default. And then we wanna edit another property that's important. That's gonna be where project. And here we can select this page. So the project property will be set as this page, meaning the trigger page. And that's the relation property that we are setting. In addition, you can preset additional properties such as maybe the status, the assignee, and any other property that you want. For now, let's keep it as it is. So that's the first action. And if you wanna add a new action, we need to repeat the exact same process. Notice how we can't really duplicate actions in Notion database automations at the moment. So you wanna add another page to the task database. And it is gonna be task two default. And we will scroll down. And that's the second action. This is gonna be task two default and whatever you have. And then we need to repeat the same steps as per above. Whenever you wanna set up dates, 
you can only select now or today. There is no other option for setting dynamic due dates. So for now, we're going to remove this. And there you go. We have our automation setup. Whenever a new project is created, you want to add task one default and task two default to that project. So let's do create. And you can see that's how it shows up. Here I have the three dots to manage the automation, edit it, pause it or delete it right away. Let's test this out by creating a new project. There you go. That's our test project here. And there you go with our tasks, task one default and task two default. The status is set, the assignee is set, and all the other properties are empty because I didn't preset them. Notice how if there is no sorting applied to your database views, the last action in a automation shows up first, whereas the first action shows up last for some reason, which is not clear yet. And that is it for the first use case that is creating default tasks using Notion database automations. Whenever you create a new page, creating other pages on a related database automatically. The advantage of this is that until early 2023, there were very few ways to achieve the automatic creation of pages in Notion databases. The disadvantage of this is that creating advanced workflows where you have many tasks and maybe dependencies among those tasks and dynamic due dates is not possible or very, very cumbersome to achieve and likely needing many formulas, which is not ideal for the user experience eventually. And the other disadvantage of the current state of Notion database automations, as well as Notion buttons for that matter, is that you can't really populate the pages of those tasks because maybe it would be useful to have some information inside the default tasks that you create automatically with subject lists or maybe links to SOPs or more context for the assignee to understand exactly what to do. But that is not possible yet without using the Notion API. Now let's get into the second use case that is marking a timestamp of a status change. So let's assume here we have different statuses, backlog, planning, in progress, post, and so on. And let's add an additional property where we want to track whenever the status of a project is set to done. And we can do that for as many statuses as we want. But for this example use case, I'm just going to do one of these options here, done. So we're going to add a new property. That's going to be a date property. Why not? And this is going to be done status set. Okay, we've got our property done status set. That's a date property that we want to automatically set whenever a project is moved to done. So let's add a new automation here. Let's call it like this. And the trigger is going to be whenever the status property is set to done, then do this. Update the done status set to today. And that is it. So let's look at the example project that I just created. Let's say the status is going to move to done. And after a few seconds, the done status is set to today. And because that's a date property, it's going to remain fixed. And this solves one issue that was prominent among a few users within the Notion community that is trying to timestamp whenever a task was complete or whenever a certain status was changed. Because then you can have sort of analytics in your system when you have enough data, maybe to see how much time your projects are stagnant in a certain status. And then you can solve for those issues, maybe analyzing what tasks are there, what are the bottlenecks that we are facing within those statuses. Or more simply, you just want to know when a task was complete exactly without having to guess whether the last edited timestamp in your Notion property that was the workaround used so far changed last. And that is really it for Notion database automations. This is all we got for now at launch date. There are many limitations that you can find documented in the blog post in the description of this video. So if you want to check that out, feel free to do that. 
and you will find exactly what you can or can't do right now with Notion database automations. For now, thanks for watching, happy exploring, and see you soon.